Hi guys, in today's screencast uh, we're going to go through energy transfers by heating and we're going to start off by looking at conduction. And conduction is basically the transfer of heat energy across a surface. And hot particles vibrate a lot when they are heated, um, as shown by the red spheres. And as you move along, uh, it gets colder and the particles are vibrating less. Uh, cool particles do not vibrate as much, they have less thermal energy and therefore less kinetic energy, so they don't vibrate as much. Now, if we look at conduction, uh, fast moving particles will um, collide with uh, not as fast moving particles sitting next to them and this will cause the heat energy to be transferred all the way along a solid and if you can see this uh, animation they keep hitting and colliding and warming the other particles up something is in the home we want to be uh, really good conductors of heat for example a frying pan um, you'd want that to be able to conduct heat so that your food warms up uh, however, a lot of things around the house you also want to be insulators to keep the heat inside your house. Now here is a very interesting drawing that, I, that I've drawn myself of a house. I know it's not the best drawing, but um, it will do. Um, so we'll look at the windows first. We can, we can improve our windows to uh, make them better insulators. We can install what is called as double glazing. And double glazing is a better insulator than normal uh, single glazing because of the fact it has air gaps. And air uh, is an incredibly poor conductor of heat because of the fact uh, that it's a gas and particles are spread out. Um, so it, it doesn't conduct heat very well and therefore you keep inside a lot of the heat. Um, another uh, example of insulation in the home is loft insulation. And loft insulation has air gaps as well. Uh, if you look at it, it, it looks a bit like cotton wool and is spongy because of the fact that it has lots of air gaps. And this uh, is another way of keeping that heat in. And the last uh, type of insulation measure we're going to look at is cavity wall insulation, uh, where they basically uh, blow insulating material between um, bricks so that... Um, it has extra insulation so they'll leave an air gap between bricks and then put insulating material very similar to loft insulating material uh, inside uh, that gap. If we wanted to talk about the conductivity of different materials often we talk about specific heat capacity which is the amount of energy required to heat one kilogram of that subject of that object uh, by one degree centigrade um, and from that definition we can come up with an equation of energy equals mass times the specific heat capacity times the change in temperature and if I'm to put it into triangles you'll know if you've seen my videos before I like to put my um, equations into triangles it helps me um, it helps me then rearrange that equation uh, because often you want to be able to calculate specific heat capacity um, so if you were to rearrange that in order to make specific heat capacity the subject of the equation what you do is you cover up specific heat capacity so C equals E divided by M times delta theta which is the change in temperature and that's how you calculate specific heat capacity of an object now you'll have done a practical, um, a required practical um, in order to calculate specific heat capacity of different metals. So uh, what you do is you get a kilogram of metal. It doesn't have to be a kilogram, but it usually makes it easier to have a kilogram. Um, and you'll have a power pack attached to a joule meter and a heater and a thermometer here it measures the temperature. Uh, you, what you need to do in the practical is take a starting temperature and see how much the temperature rises every minute and write the energy transferred in that time. Now the alternative is to using a joule meter. Uh, joule meter is the easier one to use, but the alternative is to use um, voltage and current. And in order to calculate energy transferred from the voltage and current, is you can do power equals uh, voltage times the current and 
then you can work out the energy transferred by doing the power, power times time. But either way you do it, you'll end up with values for energy transferred and temperature raised. From this, you can then draw a graph. Um, remember the independent variable goes on the x-axis and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. So the independent variable in this practical is the amount of energy to transfer and the dependent variable, the thing that's changing, is the temperature. So, uh, as you can see, a straight line uh, graph uh, occurs and you can get a value for the change in energy and the change in temperature. Um, then to work out um, uh, your specific heat capacity, uh, remember that is E divided by um, change in temperature times uh, the mass of the object. Now I said it's easier if the mass of the object is one kilogram because then it doesn't matter about the mass of the object but you need to put in the mass of the object if it is if it's any other value to one. So you, to do that, you just do E divided by delta theta. 